Hello everyone, Brian here. Today we'll be starting a fun growing contest between two types of green onion, the Tokyo Long White and the Ishikora Long Winter. And we'll grow those from seed and see how they grow uh, side by side. Uh, green onions is a plant that is used in a wide variety of dishes. So um, we won't talk about it too much as you're probably familiar with it. For, for me in the kitchen, I use it in uh, gumbo, in ramen, in a pump, uh, pork bone broth soup that I make uh, for lunch most days. And the green onion, is um, it adds all the extra flavors to uh, otherwise very simple uh, broth. And it's one plant that I grow throughout the year. And if there's only one plant I can grow, it's probably the green onion because uh, I can come out and get as many green onions or as little as I need versus having to go to the store and with, uh, with a kid, it's getting him in and ready to go to the store. It's, it's a pretty logistical, um, challenging affair. So, so having the green onion here is really, really convenient for me. And before we, we plant our green onion in this um, space here, we'll look at the two green onions that we are currently growing. So we have here this Ishikara long green onion and um, and then we'll look at the Tokyo long white. Green onions are pretty easy to grow from seed and once you have a few growing you can leave one to let it flower and you can save its seed so you can have a perpetual su supply of onion seeds year after year. So all you need is this one seed packet to get your perpetual supply of green onions. When you look at the picture of the green onion, pay particular attention to the illustration of the stalk and how much there is, uh, how much white there is. This white here makes the scallion uh, unique in that it's kind of like fresh onions. So you have the really um, ar aromatic and uh, the texture is also different, it's more crunchy. So when you add it to your, your, uh, your dishes, you have that component. And then you have the leafy part. This part is also a little bit more, um, I guess, chewy. So you have that, that different texture. You have the crunch, and then you have the chewy texture up here. This white here, we're gonna pay a particular attention to. This, this is actually not how I have found that it grows. So to get this extra long white portion of the plant, it, it requires that the plant is mounded as it grows. And we, we didn't do that for the, the Tokyo long white onions that we have in our yard. Uh, we found out about mounding after getting the seeds for these Ishikara long winter. So here, the, these ones are known for their long white portion and um, once again, this is not how it typically grows from seed. If you were grow, to grow it from seed and just not do anything, they don't produce these long white stalks. You have to mound it as it, it grows. This is the reveal of our Ishikara long winter scallion. This is the first time that we've grown it and this was mounded as it's as it grew so it should be underneath here really long and really white so are you ready I'm getting to feel that it was ripping apart so we'll loosen the soil here and I don't know um, you can't see because I'm not in front of the camera but I'm pretty excited about this this is really really exciting this is the first time we've grown a, a green onion in this manner and it looks to be pretty successful. I hope I don't break it off. That would, that would be anticlimactic here. It's, it's really low down there. It, it's, um, I transplanted it into this pot with the roots basically down here. So 
we have we should have about this much of green onion. Okay, here we go. Ta-da! This is pretty exciting. Hope you can see. Um, look at that. All that white stock is really awesome. Okay, um, let's go look at the Tokyo Long White. Here are some Tokyo Long White green onions growing with the strawberry here. These are a little bit less mature than the Ishikara Long. So as far as size comparison, it's not going to be a um, even one. But here's the Tokyo Long White green onion. It's not as mature as the Ishikara Long. So the comparing it by size is not going to be fair in this case. However, its structure we can compare it with because as it gets more mature, it will get bigger, but the proportion between stalk and leaf is going to be the same. This is, this is how it grows when there is no mounting involved. And there's a good bit of onion stock here. And I believe these types of onions were originally bred for their stock. The longer they grow, the, the more sought after they are. So um, as far as growing these, these can also be hilled or mound as they grow to encourage a really long stock. So we'll do that in our growing contest. Here's our area where we're going to grow our green onions in the raised planter. It's hard to see from this angle, but this soil is actually pretty much lower than the rest of the soil that's here. And there is about three inches of um, depth here that we can backfill or mound as the green onions grow. We're going to do three rows of green onions and this this row here we're going to plant our Tokyo long white then we're going to do another row here and then another row here this is really loose soil and so this is really loose soil and the spacing is a very generous three inches between rows. We just made our three rows for the green onions and the row that's closest to the ed edge of the planter here, we're going to grow the Tokyo Long White just for um, using in the kitchen. And then the contest between the two will grow in the remaining two rows. Because the lighting is is mostly the sun's going to mostly come in this direction. There might be an effect on on how these um, green onions grow. There might the ones that grow here might get more light and may grow better than the ones on the back row. So um, it'll be a fun contest, and we're going to do a coin toss to see who gets the front row. Uh, heads is going to be the Tokyo Long White and Tails is going to be the Ishikara Long. It's going to be Heads. Here are the seeds for the onions. And all the seeds in the Liam family look very similar to this. They look and feel like little bits of charcoal. And as far as sowing the seeds, we sprinkle them along the row.
We've had stuff come and dig at our planters for grubs recently, and this cover seems to work in deterring them from coming in. So I'm going to put this here just to protect our plants because we want to make sure that this um, video series can continue on. Thanks once again for joining me out there in the garden as we begin our growing contest between these two wonderful green onion varieties. If you were to ask this brute what the difference in taste is, it's too subtle for me to be able to distinguish. If I do detect any kind of differences, I'll be sure to make notes in future episodes. So until then, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. In the other raised planter here, we had the holy basil or tulsi that was here and we want to respect the cultures that revere the plant and thank the tulsi for all that they brought to our garden while they were growing here. We also have um, seeds planted in the space now and hopefully they will turn into plants for us. But here's a quick run through. In these types of planters, the edge here, it's kind of like a no man's land area. And uh, we planted some uh, marigold here. So they'll, they'll work as uh, a pest deterrent. Hopefully they will deter the pants plus pests because we're growing a lot of uh, leafy greens that the pests like. For instance, in uh, in this row here, we have some freckles, romaine lettuce that are sowed, and some Napa cabbage that are sowed here. I forget what was here. These are the Crimson Force bunching onions. So we have some bunching onions here. Onions also help to deter pests, so hopefully they'll, they'll do their job in doing so. Uh, I think the plan is to have a couple of Napa cabbage grow here. I've never grown Napa cabbage before. And we'll see how that turns out. I think they're more difficult to grow, so a little bit uh, wary about our results. So we're setting our expectations a little bit lower for them. Here we have um, a couple of Chinese mustard plant uh, plants that we want to grow. They're called Gai Choi, and that's Cantonese. And the idea is to let them. Gr I think they grow pretty big, so we're gonna. We're gonna um, grow two plants here. So one, I think one was here and the other one was there. So we're gonna let them grow. And in the back row are some wasabi arugula seeds that were sowed. So the idea is that um, the mustard will take some time before they get big and take up all that space. So uh, in the meantime, we'll have stuff that grow along with it, like the wasabi arugula and um, there is a row of Tushan heirloom carrots that are grown here uh, in, in back of this row of red core Chantenay carrots. And then all along the back portion, and I'm um, hoping they'll grow onto the trellis, are some snap peas. I think they're hybrid snap peas. Um, I forget the variety, but th I think they're the burr pea. From the burpee seeds so they're a hybrid snap pea seeds that i had for a couple years so i'm just going to grow those out and use up the seeds then over here on this side we have seeds started for some early broccoli um gonna have one plant here and then one in front of the towards the front of the planter and we have some lavoie spinach in this area here and then we're gonna do a row of watermelon radishes. 